Good afternoon. Can you hear me at the back? All working. Um, I doubt you ever thought you would be hearing a talk from a shoe repairer <laughs> in your world. And, um, but I'm going to talk to you briefly about how the shoe repair world works, because it'll help you understand why I'm gate-crashing your party and you haven't kicked me out yet. So this is our business. We have 1,000 of these little shoe repair shops run by, on average, 2.1 colleagues, and we repair your shoes, we cut your keys, fix your watches, fix your phones. Jamie, we, I've already just given a discount card to get his phone sorted out. Um, but one of the things that we've learned is the only way to survive in this kind of business is to be great at serving customers. So that's why, above our fascia, we say great service by great people. If we have fantastic colleagues giving great service, we do very well. If we don't have fantastic colleagues, the whole thing crumbles very, very quickly. The difference in our business between having a fantastic colleague and a poor colleague is 50% in turnover straight away. So we're very dependent on people, although we are um, really a high street retailer. People, because we've got shops, people think we're a retailer. We're not. We're a service retailer. And the way we run it is by a culture of what we call upside-down management. Now, the reason why we do it like this is I went around the world looking at the, the most amazing service companies. I went around the States. I've been around Scandinavia, Europe, Australia, and everywhere. And the one thing that I learned is those companies that give great service run the business upside down. So what that means is, is that those who serve customers and put money in the till are the most important people in the business. So in our world, they are the kings and queens of our business. And everybody else's job is to help support and guide them, is not to tell them what to do, it's not to invent rules and processes, it's to let them get on with it. So that's why, when you go into our shops, you can haggle, they'll do discounts, they decide whatever stock they want, they can do whatever promotions they want, because we trust them to serve customers however they think is best. And the way we do that is we only recruit people based on their personality. So we want happy, kind, fun, engaging, interesting people who look you in the eye. We don't want dull, moody, lazy, scruffy. They may be the world's best cobbler, but they're not right for us. So what we've learned is you need to have a very, very strong culture that's based on service, and you need to fill the business with wonderful people who have a great personality. So again, Nothing about identity so far. <laughs> now, seven years ago, we bought a business called Max Spielman, which um, is 200 photo shops. It had, it had gone into receivership. And the only reason why we bought it is because the, the old um, chief exec who used to run it when, it when it used to make money was a friend of mine and lived around the corner from the office. So when it went bust, he told me it had gone bust. And then within three weeks, I bought it. And it, although you wouldn't think it has any connection at all with repairing shoes and cutting keys. It actually does. We, we print photos and we sell frames, um, but it is, it is a high street service business. It's a bit like a butcher's or a hairdresser's or a tattooist or a body piercer's. We, are, we decided we're not going to go into tattooing. I can imagine the customer complaints from that. But the one part of this business that we really liked was the photo ID. And what, where we seem to do well is where we, where we provided arm round the shoulder service. So this is for customers who often didn't like the booths, for elderly people, disabled people, and especially babies. They would come in, feel comfortable, and get a really good photo. So and this was quite a big part of the business. And then we bought um, the Tesco photo business a couple of years ago. And again, they didn't have a photo ID business, so we introduced it, and it became a significant part of the business. So uh, I'm a shoe repairer who's now getting more and more into photo. And then I went and bought Snappy Snaps. So I've got 450 photo shops now. And Snappy Snaps is a predominantly, <coughs> London, predominantly London business. In fact, this is a franchise business. None of the rest of our businesses are franchised. But Snappy Snaps is a franchise business. And their photo ID, ID business is bigger than the whole of the, um, the rest of the business together. If you look at on an average per shop, it's way bigger in Snappy Snaps. Because they specialize in providing ID for lots of international visitors, do loads of work for the embassies in London, and it became a really specialist area. So when we started to hear about the digitization of ID, we started to panic. And think this is a pretty big part of our business. You know, this could go away, so, so what are we going to do? And it's, my strategy has always been to be very, very open 
to go and ask hundreds of questions to hundreds of people and to try and work out how we can find a way through it. So I met Don and I've met Dave and I've met lots of you over the last 18 months and I decided to gate crash your party. And I, I quite like risk and when, when it comes to business, when, it, when you sort of understand what you're trying to do, actually to me this doesn't feel risky, although I still think I've got a small chance of it working. But if it works, I think we'll win big, but if it doesn't work, we've met some very nice people. <laughs> so, what we decided to do is understand what it's all about. What can, how can we use our strengths? And our strengths are, we know shops. We don't understand a lot of the things that you talk about. What we understand is customers walking into shops and us helping them, arm around the shoulder, arm around the shoulder service and helping them to get what they need. So, wind it on. Johnson's The Cleaners, one of our competitors, had a, had a shop that they rented off us in Henley. So they decided to close that shop. So I thought, oh my God, what are we going to do? We're not getting the rent in from the shop. What can I do? So I thought, ah, why don't we open up a shop all about identity? The world's first identity shop. Because I've got, I can't do anything else with this shop, so we might as well do it in Henley. So lots of people have asked, why, why do you choose Henley? For no other reason, it was an empty shop. So we have opened our shop called Archive on the high street in Henley, and Will, who's going to get up in a minute, um, is in charge of all, all of this project. And what we decided to do was to open up a shop that not just us, but everybody else in their, the identity world can come in and play, can come in and try things, see what works, see what fails, see what customers like. And it may not be the perfect demographic, but I can assure you, in the first few weeks of trading, we've had um, lots of um, SME business people, we've had our, um, a fair share of what's called nutters coming in. <laughs> in fact, when I first walked in there, I, I, I met one who's been in a number of times, he tried to sell me um, some bio, um, bio liquid to clean toilets with that I could drink. <laughs> so I'm trying to work out how that's involved with identity, but anyway. The point of it is, is let's just open a shop and let's see what happens. Let's take the risk and let's do it properly and do it for the long term, and let's push and try, and eventually we will either learn how to create an amazing business, or we will learn that this is not the right way to create an amazing business, and maybe we'll go and do something else. So, we got our inspiration, this is just a few shots of inside, from a, a bank in America called Umpqua. I don't know whether any of you have heard of Umpqua Bank before. Um, it is the world's best bank. When you phone them up, they answer the phone and say, welcome to the world's best bank. They've won retail, um, the best retail store in the States for the last two years. They beat Apple. Um, their customer service is legendary. And it's actually because they trust the colleagues in the bank to serve customers and make decisions based on their own skills. Funnily enough, through the um, banking recession, they've had no problems at all. They've grown their business. Very similar to Metro Bank in some ways. So we decided to have a space that was very welcoming, that... Um, Anybody could come in, they could use the Wi-Fi, use the meeting rooms, take an office, sit down, have tea, coffee, and Will brings in very nice cakes every week. Um, but just, just to have it as an environment where people feel comfortable that they can come in, so then we can understand what they need. So we decided that what we're going to do is prove that you are you. Because one of the things that we've learned throughout all these discussions is the only way to actually prove that you are you is to see you face to face. And that's the kind of business we're in. So we want customers to come in and we will take their um, digital photograph, their digital fingerprints and their digital voice and we will store that in a personal data store. And we'll also verify that against various passports, birth certificates and so on to prove that you are you. But to me what's important is that individual then keeps that information. They are in control of that information and they, they can then do with that information as they choose, whether it's age verification, whether it's opening up a bank account, whether it's joining the local scout group, because we're also providing other services. And interestingly, the one that seems to be very popular, admittedly very early days, is employee background checks. People are very interested in employee back, background checks, age verification, um, and um, all, the, all the areas around um, criminal record checking and so on, because... Um, what we found in Henley is that lots of people in small businesses, they're involved in the local scout groups, they're involved with various community initiatives, governors of schools and so on, and it's important that they need to prove who they are. So we're setting up um, this um, data store where people can 
keep their verified information, but also they can store their own information in there as well, and um, that they can come in and scan and we can put in to their store. So this service will be starting in about a week's time, so we don't know how it's going to go, but, but um, we've been working with a number of you here to help us um, get that up and running. Um, so we're thinking it's going to be business people coming in, SME markets. We think it's going to be people who are, 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 are part of um, community groups. But what we're really interested in is the assisted digital piece. And this is where you come in, because we are opening our doors of this shop to any of you to come in and use your skills and, and, and business to have a go to see what happens for you. So we've already had an, um, a few organisations have come in, and, and Will will talk about that in a minute. But we, we don't really know where it's going to go. But from, from our initials, initial impression, the assisted digital piece is going to be a very significant part of what we're going to be doing in the future. Um, because the thin file um, cohort need to come into a place like our shop to prove who they are. So photo ID is still an important part of the business. And um, this is, in fact, the only thing. We have actually taken some money on photo ID. Be pleased. I think it was £36 last week, wasn't it? <laughs> so, so as you can imagine, I, I'm not even doing a P&L on this so far. We're just going to enjoy it. Um, so you, there will be some normal um, services that, that we offer, predominantly all around photo ID. But we are open to trying lots of new things that we want you to bring to us, and you can have a play and see what works. And, and if it means in the future that we can work together after you've proven how it works, and that's absolutely what we want to see. So I'm now going to hand you over to Will. Will's the one in the middle. This is with his two colleagues. And you can see the little table to the side where they, they seem to sit and have lots of cups of tea during the day. Um, and Will's going to explain about one of the trials we've done recently. Ron hear me, all working okay at the back? Yes? Brilliant. Um, so one of the things that when James comes up and speaks, I'm lucky enough to hear him do that, it keeps reminding me I need to remember to do shoe repairs in my free time, because if this does go downhill, I still like to have a job. Um, but yeah, by joining OAX, we've actually been really, really lucky in that it's opened up lots of doors to us. Um, so it's been fantastic in that we've been able to sit at the table with lots of fantastic organisations lots of great people in the public sector, and also they've given us a bit of an education, uh, because as James said, we're not experts at this. You know, what we're really good at is serving people and having fantastic colleagues in lots of shops. Um, but one of the things I'm going to speak to you about now is recently we were lucky enough to run a trial uh, of an assisted digital passport application. So this trial was with, uh, here we go, uh, with the assisted digital team from GDS, um, so that was a fantastic Richard Palfrey, who's in the room. He very kindly helped us through this whole process. Uh, and then the, the guys from Havanchity's passport office as well. Um, what we wanted to find out was, does it work for people to walk into a high street environment and gain access to an, an assisted digital service of some kind? And as I said, the service we were trialling was um, a passport application. So could someone come in and do a passport application with the help of one of our great colleagues. Um, we ran the trial over four days. We did two days in one of our photo shops in a Max Spielman in Newbury uh, because we wanted to, to test it in one of our norm, normal environments as well. And then we did two days in our purpose-built shop in Henley um, because at least it gives us something to do with it at the moment. <laughs> uh, so the first question that we really need to ask is why on earth would someone need help with this stuff. You know, it's, it's fairly simple, but is there a need for people to come into a high street place and actually have digital assistance in one of these online services? So I've got a little video to show you guys now, which I hope will, will explain that. So if you grab the mouse on your right hand side there, and that's going to move the cursor in front of you up. If you move the mouse up, Oh, oh, that's it. So you've got the cursor. Oh on the yeah, oh, there. the little arrow. Yeah. That's right. So that's going to move it all around. Yeah. So what we'll do is move it across to start now. Here we go. That one. That's right. Keep it flat on the table. That's it. That one as well. That's it. And now if you click using your left button, so pop your finger onto the left button there and click it. 
wasn't it? Can we try it one more time? So it's going to go through. Okay, so that, that was a lady who, who came into our Newbury shop and it actually took 45 seconds for her to click that first button. So I think the answer is yes, there is a need for this stuff. Um, the second question we had, and this was really important, and I knew it would be important to James, was that if I wanted to do this in lots of our shops, the first thing he would say to me is, it can't have an impact on the other stuff. You know, we need to make sure that we're still able to do all of our other services uh, in line with this one. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. Uh, so I've got another video to show you, which hopefully will explain that. Very busy. Yes. So we've beaten target more than what we need to. Okay. We've done the week's target today. Oh, right, nice. Which is good. That's good. So that's uh, our great colleague Carl in Newbury saying that we've, we actually did a week's target in a single day whilst we we're running this trial. I can see the smile on his face already. Um, and so the answer is yes. You know, this works well alongside our other services, which was obviously an important thing for us. The... Um, the final thing, and, and this is actually probably the most important thing, is can we give customers an amazing service whilst we do this? Because that's what we pride ourselves on. You know, we're not interested in half assing it. We don't want to try and do a service unless we can give customers the same service we do with all our other, all our other offerings in the shops. Um, so we've got a final video to show you. It's quite nice to walk into a shop like this. Right. And actually, Go and grab a free cup of coffee, sit down on a sofa, you don't mind. And you've also got somebody who's actually can look over you whilst you're doing it. Mm. It just makes life a hell of a lot easier. And for five minutes, you can go, hmm. I love that bit. Hmm. Um, so the answer is yes. You know, it seemed that people, they did like it. And we could give a fantastic service. I mean, I think it really helps we give away free coffee. Um, that's, that's a big win, but we answered those three key questions for us, and, that, and that's, you know, as a business that likes to make money, can we do this? Will it work for us? You know, and the answer is yes, you know, there is, there's a market there. People like to come into a high street environment and, and gain access to this sort of service, and that means that we can take money for it, which is why we're all here at the end of the day. Um, so thanks very much, guys. If you've got any questions, fire them to James. He'll just forward them to me. <laughs> <laughs>
it, that gives you another dimension as to how we're going to address this. So, well, do you want to answer that? What the process yeah, is going I mean, to be? I think. I think <laughs> 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 it's another hospital pass, that one. Um, I mean, it, it's really simple to us. We don't know yet. Um, the answer is we'll wait and see how we can work that out. I mean, I think the, a key to that is having a really, really solid audit trail. But, you know, the people that are going to rely on this information, it's them that will let them kind of inform our decision. We'll ask, so what do we need to do to make sure you're happy with this? Um, but at the moment, there's no one relying on the information. <laughs> so we have to wait and see, I guess. But we'll make sure that we meet all the requirements of all our relying parties. You know, that's, that, otherwise, we haven't got a business. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we've taken on a privacy director, a security director, and what we're, what we're thinking of is the actual final checking won't be done in the shop. It'll be done at a sort of our own, I don't know, a, a non, a, a, an office in the middle of Manchester or something like that, probably. Yeah. Um, but we are working with a lot of other companies who are helping us with this. So you know, what we want to specialise in is what we're good at, which is serving customers in a shop. Uh, uh, just uh, time for perhaps one more question. Is there any more questions from the floor themselves? No. Well, well James is very, yes, very could, kindly. Go on. Can I just reiterate? So <laughs> if anybody wants to um, get in touch with my email, I, I don't know whether I should do this. My email is james.simpson.com. <laughs> so email me, then I forward it on to Will. But if any of you, <laughs> if any of you want to um, do anything in Henley, either pop in, have a chat, use it for any um, trials or anything, we're more than happy to accommodate you. So um, just ask, and the answer will be yes. <laughs>